My husband doesn't know that I'm using gluten-free elbow macaroni, so I'll keep it to our secret ourselves. I'm gonna be making a venison goulash in the crock pot. Hi friends, it's Christine at Gillen Farms, and if you're watching this, you're watching it on my channel, Christine Mrs. Gillen Farms, where we like to do gardening, canning, cooking. I'm really excited because I've been invited to the Croctoberfest 2023 that is being hosted by Jenny at Jenny's Scratch Made Kitchen. And co-hosting with her is Tony at Kettle Kitchen. Another exciting thing is that November 3rd, there will be a giveaway. So you're gonna get to have opportunity if you watch each video and leave a meaningful comment. You may be one of the three prizes that will be given out during Croctober 2023 giveaway. Make sure you have all your comments in and stuff because they will select one date and then they will um, select a comment through the random picker selection um, from those videos. So three lucky winners. Hang out with me for a little bit in my kitchen here on Gillen Farms and we will get this started so we can get to work and then come back in the evening after chores are done and enjoy a crock pot full of goulash. So we just added um, one tablespoon of olive oil in the cast iron pan is already preheated. Now I'm gonna add my ground venison. Up a little bit, and that'll be nice. I'm not going to take this very long because I'm going to let it finish cooking through in the crock pot. I'm going to add our pre chopped onions. This is a cup of onions, and I'm going to add um, one green pepper. Or if I have a orange or a red pepper, I can put the best of those in the garden. This guy is ready, so I have quite a few and that are producing right now. And then I have this handy dandy little um, meat smasher, we're going to call it. It helps cut down the And now I'm going to add a tablespoon of minced garlic. And I'll add a teaspoon of sea salt. And I'm just going to make sure and let this cook all together where she can smell this between the onions and the green bell peppers. Yeah, so exciting that this is a deer that we harvested last year. My husband did um, green peppers from our garden and onions from our garden. This doesn't take very long. This is, I don't know if I said one pound, but this is two pounds of ground venison. And if you notice that um, what I did was add just a taste, uh, probably two tablespoons of water because there's just not the moisture that you're going to find. It's not dry meat though. Um, I don't know, a lot of people say they don't like venison. I always say it's because they don't like it because um, how it was probably, if you don't like the deer meat or venison, you probably don't like it because one, if you had it, it probably wasn't either cooked properly. Two, it could be that whoever harvested the deer didn't take care of it in the field correctly or the processor uh, didn't take care of it, or a combination of those three, or meat to me is a delicacy. We're gonna have to finish cooking, and then we'll move to the crock pot, so don't go away, come back, I'll be right back. Okay, in our crock pot, I'm going to add the mixture of venison meat and green peppers and onions. Just gonna throw that in there. Okay. Add some more garlic. half a cup of my frozen onions because I like a lot of onions in those. I've got this set on high for six hours. Okay, to this mixture I'm going to add two bay leaves that I'll remove later and actually I have four small pieces. Add one more, there we go. One good measure, a little fourth of one. And then I have a mixture here of Italian um, seasonings, which is going to include about one tablespoon. Within this, there's going to be thyme, rosemary, um, and oregano. Add one jar of tomato paste, or tomato sauce, excuse me. 
And then I'm gonna take this jar to rinse it out and do half a cup of water. So I've added some water to this. This is one cup of water, not a half a cup of water. And I'm going to mix that and see what the, um, the level of moisture is. Okay, is that the consistency I'd like for it to be? So what I'm gonna do now is let this cook for the next mm, four to six hours, probably six hours, just slowly cook on low. And then I'll come back. Um, right after I get all fork and we'll throw in the macaroni. Yum. Look at that. Now what I did is I added another jar of tomato sauce. Um, I just didn't really, I don't know if it was me, uh, what I had in the jar, but I just felt like it needed to be thickened up a little more. And then with cooking, it's really gotten to that rich tomato look that I want. My onions have cooked down nicely and so the green pepper. An eight ounce box of organic and gluten-free pasta, uh, elbow, um, elbows pasta. So I'm gonna add in here, I'm gonna add it right And then I'm gonna mix it in and I feel like there's enough water. I'm gonna add just um, probably a half a cup of water to this and then I'll get it closed. What I'll do is we'll let it cook for 30 minutes and I'll check it and we'll see how the noodles are holding up. Or the, the pasta's holding up. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see all the, oh yeah, I don't know if you can see all the yumminess or steam coming off it, but if she is hot, we're gonna turn it off. And we're just gonna place it on warm. That way, Make sure it's not sticky. What I I wound up doing, um, well, after I added that macaroni and cheese and it was they were all dente, I wound up adding a can of corn. Um, Johnny and I both like a little bit more substance to it, just a little bit. Um, so um, just corn. That's it. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna. Give me a little bit here and we're going to do a taste test and what i like to do is i do um when we serve this this is the main part of the meal but i may sometimes do mashed potatoes or i may just cook a pan of uh, cornbread or um, one of my our favorite things to do is to take like our summer squash um, if i have it either in the freezer or fresh cook that up with some um, just roast it and with a little bit of olive oil on top and some lemon pepper we like that with with it or just some roasted um, root vegetables. Okay, we have a little bit of a sampling of the goulash. All right, got a little bite size, well, more than bite size, but I'm hungry. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a taste test of this venison goulash in a crock pot and hope it's all great, but you know, I have made this before, so I know it's a good thing, but let's taste it just in case. It's nice and creamy. Um, I eat venison. It's not overpowered by the seasonings I placed in here. They just marry well together. Um, the corn gives a little bit of a bite. Um, and the noodles, macaroni noodles that are gluten free, hold up extremely well. I just want to remind you on this recipe, you know, there's so many different things you can do with it and add to it. I added corn. You could add whatever you might like. We've added in the past, we've added green beans, fresh cut green beans. We've added squash. Uh, we've added zucchini, a broccoli. It's whatever you want to add vegetable wise. Um, and also you could use different uh, pasta. Elbow macaroni and cheese is what, you know, most people are familiar with. And I called it macaroni and cheese. Not macaroni and cheese. Boy, it's hard to say elbow macaroni without saying the cheese, isn't it? It's just for me. Anyway, and also, you know, on the venison, if you don't have venison, you don't like venison, there's always ground beef. I would try to get a lean ground beef, but if you don't, that's fine. Just make sure it's really good and drained. Um, it would be a great flavor too. There's also ground, what, ground turkey, um, ground chicken. You could try that. All right, well, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really enjoyed making it. Um, it is a childhood memory uh, recipe, and it's also one of our favorites um, 
when we're out maybe hunting or it's been a long day at work. It's something that's ready for us when we come in, made with our favorite um, protein source, which I'll is put the basic. recipe down in the description of my video, along with all the other channels that are um, participating in the It's great collaboration. I love collaborations and I hope I get um, invited to more. This is my third being released on October 3rd. Can't wait. Um, there are so many amazing channels that are on the list. Some that I've been following for many years. I remind you that November 2nd there will be a giveaway. It starts at 4.30 uh, Mountain Time or 5.30 p.m. Central Time or 6.30 Eastern Time. And just a reminder that the giveaway winner will be chosen from comments on a random from a random day. So be sure and go out and Again, you're going to find some great recipes that you get to add to your um, list of go-tos. And in addition, like I said, the cherry on top is gonna be that there's gonna be three winners, three. So what they will do is um, do a random date selection. So whoever's videos fall on those days, they'll then do the um, pull a random comment. So be sure and leave a meaningful comment for each one of the videos that you watch for your chance of winning. And those um, prizes are from Jenny's Scratch Me Kitchen and Kettle Kitchen in the Miller Life Kitchen. Okay, again, I want to thank Jenny at Jenny's Scratch Made Kitchen and Tony at Kettle Kitchen for inviting me to this year's 2023 Crock Toss. Uh, it was an honor to be invited. And I hope maybe I'll be here next year. Anyway, I'll be watching the rest of the videos along with you and making my comments. So I love collaborations and I hope I get invited to more. Um, one last thing is if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps the algorithm as you all know. I appreciate your time and want to say God bless you and I hope you have a great week. Take care. All right, well this is... Nap, nap. I am so...